Hello everyone, I'm Nabil Murad. In this training video I want to talk about a special type of formatting called conditional formatting. Unlike the regular formatting which lives inside a cell, conditional formatting lives in memory. We have five predefined types of conditional formatting. If you want to look at the different types of predefined conditional formatting, then you go to the Home tab and in the Styles group, click on the down arrow for conditional formatting and you will see the five types of conditional formatting. Let's explore these five types. The first type is the Highlight Cell Rule. And when you hover over it, there is a flyout menu. We choose some comparison operators. So I would like to highlight a value if it's greater than, less than, between, and so on. The second rule is the top and bottom rule. To highlight the top two values, the top five values, the top 5%, 10%, the bottom two values, and so on. And then we have the data bars, the color scales, and the icon sets. You might have noticed that the first two rules are separated with a horizontal line from the next three rules. For a reason, because the first two rules are just finding the values that meet my condition. While the next three rules are comparing the values in the range I select to each other. Let's see some examples to understand it better. So what if I would like to highlight the values for Monday if the value goes above 125? In this case, I need to select the entire range. That's always the first step in conditional formatting. And then I go to conditional formatting, click on the down arrow, highlight set rule, I would like to highlight any value above, greater than, and then I type the amount I want. This amount that pops up automatically by default, that's the average of all these numbers. So if I type 125, we have only two values above 125. When I hit OK, now here is the conditional formatting. Do we see any formatting in the top cell? Not yet, because the condition is not met. But the moment I change the number, let's make it 247. When I hit enter, the conditional formatting rule pops up and we see the conditional formatting. Should you wish to delete the conditional formatting rule, then do not select only the cell showing the conditional formatting. You need to select the entire range. And then you go to conditional formatting and we have two options, clear rules from selected cells or clear rules from entire sheet. I want to clear rules from selected cells. Let's see an example of the top and bottom rules. Let's say I would like to highlight the top three values for Thursday. So I select the range and then go to conditional formatting, click on the down arrow and select top and bottom rules. From the flyout menu, I'll be selecting the top 10 items. The name of the rule is top 10 items, but it doesn't mean that I'm limited to 10. So if I select this rule and say I just want to select the top three, so I type three, and then I can change the color if I wish. I can select a green color. When I hit OK, here is my conditional formatting rule. These are the top three values. In my next rule, I would like to apply one of the rules below the horizontal line, the color scales. What does it mean, a color scale? It means if I apply a conditional formatting color scales rule in this range, the lowest value will appear in red, the highest value will appear in green, and the values in between will be a gradient of the two colors. I'm selecting the entire range, and then I click on conditional formatting, color scales, and when I hover over color scales, I see from the flyout menu some thumbnails. I'll be selecting the first one and when I select it, look at this. The lowest value 15 is in red. The highest value 471 is in green. All the other values are a gradient of the two colors. What if I want to delete this conditional formatting rule? I can do that in two ways. I can either select the range and then go to conditional formatting and select clear rule, clear rule from selected cell. That's one option. I can also go to manage rule and if the dialog box opens, I can select to delete the rule. I'm not deleting it for now. 
I mentioned that the two rules at the top are separated with a horizontal line from the other three rules for a reason. These three rules are comparing values to each other. That's why you see the color and you see the conditional formatting in the entire range, while the first two rules appear only when the condition is met. The other cells that do not show the condition do not reflect the conditional formatting rule, although it lives in memory for these cells. So let's apply the next conditional formatting rule, data bars. And in preparation to creating my data bars, I want to copy these numbers to the right. So I'll be selecting the right column. Right starts with letter R. So if I hit Control R, I would have copied to the right. Now I would like to create my conditional formatting data bar in this range. I'm selecting the entire range. Click on the down arrow for conditional formatting and select data bars. We have two categories of data bars, the gradient fill and the solid fill. The gradient fill was the old one that was introduced for the first time in Office 2007. It has a little issue because when we have two numbers that are pretty close to each other, and because each bar will end with a fading color, then we cannot recognize which one is bigger than the other one if we have a minor difference. That's why they introduced the solid fill starting from Office 2010. That's a much better option. And now when looking at the numbers, when looking at the data bar, I don't need to see the numbers because I can tell for sure that Southeast has the highest sales amount. I can tell for sure that Central Region had the lowest sales amount. And I can tell that the Midwest has some losses. So I want to hide these numbers. And to hide these numbers and simply keep the data bars, I select the entire range, go to conditional formatting, select manage rule. And now if I say I want to edit this rule and then check the box for show bar only, that will keep the data bar without the numbers. So when I hit OK, here is the data bar. The last conditional formatting rule is called the icon sets, in which we represent each one of the numbers by a special icon. We have different categories, we have different groups, we have groups of three, four, and five. So let's select the range and let's go to conditional formatting icon sets. And now I have different categories. I can use these arrows if I wish. I can use the traffic lights. I can use the check mark, the exclamation mark, and the X. I can use the flags. I have groups of four. I have groups of five. And if you are printing with black ink only, then you'd better select one of the conditional formatting rules or one of the icon sets that are different in shape because when I print in black and white, I wouldn't be able to recognize them or differentiate them. Then I have a circle, I have a triangle, I have a diamond. So this one will work fine. So the lowest numbers appear in red, the highest numbers appear in green, and the numbers in between appear in yellow. What's the breakpoint from red to yellow or from yellow to green? The breakpoint is at 33% and 67%. If you wish to modify it, then you go to conditional formatting, select manage rule, and in the manage rule dialog box I want to edit. So when I hit edit, here are the numbers 33% and 67%. Should you wish to modify them, you can do this here. Should you wish to keep the icons and hide the number, then you check this box, show icon only. When I hit OK twice, now I can see the icon without the numbers. That was about the five predefined conditional formatting rules. Without a doubt, the real power of conditional formatting is to apply it by using formulas. That's an entire tutorial by itself. If you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you in our next training video.